All right, back in it. Michael Schneider's life still has a good trial run. Here at Alley Six. All right, Jason, Robert, and Neil, how you guys doing? Chilling. Oh yeah. Good Sick. morning. Good. Good. All right. As we discussed before, we're all drug dealers. I'm here to buy. Um, uh, so, drinking the Kool Aid. Right. So okay. So, Jason, again, why a distillery in wine country? Um, why not? I guess. <laughs> There's plenty of booze in this country, in this county. Let's add some more goodness to it. Absolutely. Um, I mean, there's a pr- plethora of things that we can produce out of all the goodness that comes from Sonoma County. It'd be apple brandy or, you know, spice peach liqueur or the whiskeys that we make and grappa and brandy and all that other fun shit. But it just, you know, adds a different element to the drunken county of Sonoma County. No, uh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Well played. Yeah, so uh, what made you want to get into distilling, I guess? That's another. Like... Um, that most definitely is the alcohol addiction. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is part of it. <laughs> All right. Uh, no love for whiskey? I mean, what were oh, you doing? Big, you... big time love for whiskey, Big time love for yeah. whiskey, okay. Um, uh, actually, when we, we, got, we got started, I personally got started. I was uh, like kind of getting submerged in the wine industry and decided to move out here to Northern California where you know, all the magic happens. And, uh, once I did, I realized that the, uh, romance of it kind of went away because everyone <laughs> does it. There's over 400 wineries in Sonoma County alone. Right. Um, so I went back to slinging drinks. It's my profession. That's where I've done most of my drugs. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so bartender. Yeah. Bar- so you, where are you bartending at? Uh, it was I've, uh, all over the country, but when I moved out here, it was at Stark Steakhouse in Santa Rosa. It was how I met this That's gentleman. That's how we met. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. And it's been love. Awesome. So At first sight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, like I like to say, we uh, instantly became drinking buddies. Mm-hmm. And more often than not, I'd end up crashing on his couch. And then we're like, you know, we should probably not buy any more beer and booze. We should start, probably start making it. And, uh, <laughs> Jason had a little... Um, brew system kind of thing so we started uh home brewing and getting things like that going mm. okay we found out we're actually better at making whiskey than wine and beer yeah right. <laughs> hey, shitty beer friends stop coming in to drink our beers <laughs> <laughs> i'm not doing it again i farted for a week last. <laughs> it's not worth it <laughs> the hangover was horrible <laughs> so <laughs> so where are you guys at starks right yeah mm. both at starks mm. And then before that, Jason, you moved out here from where? Uh, the um, I was living in Tucson, Arizona. Uh, we lived in Tucson for four years, and then Scottsdale four years prior to that. Uh, Southern California, Florida, Montreal, just kind of ventured all over the place. Okay, it's one of the beauties of bartending. You can pick up and go Absolutely. where the fuck you want. No, definitely make friends immediately. So, Who had the best drugs? <laughs> Montreal, actually. <laughs> well, <I'm> sorry, Robert. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> they were uh, a little bit more legit up there. I felt like. This isn't rated PG, right? Brandy. No, all right. Brandy no, cocaine. this is anything goes. Anything goes uh, here. Special um, K for the everyday. <laughs> <laughs> Not for, just for breakfast cereal anymore. Yeah, right? <laughs> um, so, okay. So, I mean, I. it's kind of funny because you and I kind of have a similar story. I, uh, I too bartended everywhere, all over the world, from Alaska to Savannah, Georgia, to Lake Tahoe. You know, Tahoe in the winters, then Alaska in the summers. And uh, then my whole thing was I started managing the bars here at Dry Creek Kitchen in Hillsburg. And then uh, my sales reps kept coming in and were like, yeah, this is a, a local spirit. And I was like, blown away. You know, like, wait a second. It's not just fucking smearing off in absolute, you know, and all that shit. So, uh, I started getting very passionate into spirit making and stuff. I built my first still, started distilling in my backyard, and I was like dead set. I'm going to be a distiller. Like, I just couldn't raise the funds. But I was meeting with real estate agents and stuff, and I actually looked at this exact spot, you know, to open in my first distillery and to get it going. I just couldn't raise the funds. But Jason, you've done a much better job. So uh, <laughs> hats off to I you. I remember actually speaking with you yeah. about that too, and you're yeah. like, "I looked at that spot." <laughs> yep. <laughs> this is a fucking headache. This is, <laughs> I know. I'm glad I financial I'm burden. And a I'm glad I'm not a distiller now. So. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, no, well, that's that's just that's awesome. Pickled liver. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, so so Neil, what do you what do you do here now? 
Um, I'm basically Jason's right hand man, kind of take awesome. care of anything that needs to be done. Um, gives him a break, a little more family time. Mm -hmm. um, you know when Lose when his, my kid. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say when Juliet was born, I was kind of running the show for a little bit, um, just so he can have his little um, you know moment with his family and kind of getting that all situated and 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 stuff. Um, but we uh, both kind of started distilling uh, around the same uh, around the same time. Um, just like hobby distilling. Yeah, pretty awesome. much. I mean, I remember. I still remember the the day that I got a phone call from Jason when he got found his first still. He was uh, at a local flea market, and I was having <laughs> breakfast with my then girlfriend. And he's like, "Dude, you never guess what I just found." And I was like, "What?" He's like, "I found a small still." I'm like, "No shit." <laughs> <laughs> and then the rest is history. Kind of then it's on. Yeah, That's we can awesome. take a shit and, then, and, then, yeah, make and then shortly after that, I'm like, "Well, I want a still." <laughs> so then I got a ten gallon, and we started kind of just you know fucking around with that. And awesome. And just learning as we go, kind of thing. Yeah, just fermenting pretty much anything you get your hands on, right? Pretty much. That's pretty much how it starts mm -hmm. most of the time. Yeah. Awesome. So, Robert, how do you know Jason? What's your story? Why here? Why in Hillsburg? I think right when, well, other than being his top, his best drug dealer, <laughs> except for the guys from <laughs> Montreal, <laughs> uh, uh, I think I heard about Alley Six opening up and was really excited because at the time I was just starting Cinema Cider right. and I was like, fuck yeah, someone else doing something else besides wine. Right. And I think I like reached out to you on Facebook or yeah, email. I, I emailed I was, you yeah, and was, was just was like, Facebook. dude, I've got a ton of shit. Like if you need any hoses or pumps or metal things or whatever, like come by, check it out. Like we should probably be friends. <laughs> That's and awesome. then I think you came over and like yeah. looked at some stuff. Oh, like, I was blown away yeah. too. And I walked into the facility and was like, holy shit. It was just this massive corridor, and they're setting up the, the canning line and everything. And I was like, "Wow, oh, this is a little above my my, my league here." <laughs> <laughs> and I remember him. He, he came over with Dwight, and like he came in. I think I had a still sitting on the floor, and there was like nothing else. And you're like, "So what do you do?" And I was like, "Well, I'm waiting for the you know the city to get you know all their shit together so they could approve all these you know this bullshit." And you're like, "Well, what do you do?" And I was like. We have this chair, and we have races on the chair. <laughs> and fucking sure enough, he grabs it and fucking runs and slides on it with like Superman style. <laughs> He's like, "Hi, see, this would be fun." Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, and, the, and, and that's then how we, it began. That's how it began. <laughs> yeah, and I think it, I remember even at the same time you were making cider at mm -hmm. home, and. <clears throat> we, we had talked about you maybe even borrowing the press that we had, yeah. but you ended up getting a different one. Mm -hmm. So it was like. In my mind, I didn't even know you guys were even connected at the time, but I've obviously known you since, I don't know, little long. kids. Yeah. And then, but then it kind of all just came together. And, uh, and then after a little bit, we, you know, he got the whiskey thing up and going. I had my cider thing rolling and right. we're like, dude, we could totally just take some of our cider, make apple brandy. Mm -hmm. So we got that kicked off. Awesome. And but you don't see, there's not a whole lot of apple brandy out here, which is like no. an apple dominated county. Well, and the crazy mm -hmm. thing is, I didn't even know I liked brandy because mm. like my whole experience with brandy was kind of just like shit, yeah. super sweet. Like exactly. honestly, I think the last time I remember drinking brandy was like high school, me and my my buddy Nick Sindel's little brother <laughs> Mitch Sindel. Oh yeah, split a whole like a like a, a fifth of what is it B and J or E and J B and J, J. B and J <laughs> brandy that's like super sweet, and we both were like throwing up, and like yeah. that was like my experience with brandy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and then Jason took the cider and turned it into brandy. And I'm like, holy shit, this is like mm -hmm. great. That, yeah, that was an exhausting <laughs> moment. I remember because I did it all out of this five gallon still at home, the pot still. <laughs> and you're like, I forget how much you gave me. It was like 20 gallons or something like that. You're like, here, make just so many different expressions and we'll see what goes. And I was like, I made a gin, I made a brandy, I made like a, a flavored one or something like that and brought it in a basket. Yeah. And we like hung out upstairs and like drinking homemade beer, good beer. Yeah. <laughs> that was a blast, man. That was great. <laughs> it's nice to remember that kind of yeah. stuff. You forget yeah, about it all. Yeah, no, definitely the the stories behind the, the main story, oh, right? you know? Um, so, okay. So you're no longer doing a cinema cider. No, nope. so no one stopped. And now, so this is like a great side project with Jason. Um, yeah. So what else are you doing? Cannabis. Cannabis. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I work drug for, dealer. I work for drug <laughs> dealer. <laughs> <laughs> drug dealer. Okay. Legal. It's uh, it's medicinal, I think, right? <laughs> and uh, it's recreational, so it's perfect. Yeah. Certain certain states, mm -hmm. right? It's, been it's medicine. Yeah. Other states, 
<laughs> Fucking get it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've been treating it legal forever, though. Right? right? It doesn't matter. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, I work for a company called Cookies. Okay. And um, it's really fun, really exciting. We're doing anything from flour to, mm-hmm. you know, we're, we're about to be, we're about to launch our beverages, too. Okay. So I'm keeping the beverage thing going. Right. A lot of stuff that I learned from just past beverage experience is translating over into this, and it's, it's fun. Now, I remember at one point, Symmetric Soda was a thing. Is that still a thing? It's about to be a thing again. Okay, awesome. I Great. have some upstairs if you'd like to try. <laughs> I'm scared to try it. <laughs> yeah. You have some, some product? Some symmetric? Yeah. Okay. I got from you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, it's, it's, like, uh, it's 15 it. milligrams, but it, it drinks like 50. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. I, I, I tried it. I was asleep <laughs> after I tried it. The drinks are crazy. Yeah. Like, it just goes immediately into your system. Right. Like, and just, but it kind of wears off quick. Yeah. Which is interesting. So if mm-hmm. you like, if you want to get high for like an hour, mm-hmm. you can do that. Yeah, that's okay though. Some people are like, I'm totally down with that because if you want to stay high, just drink another one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. That's perfect. That's, that's a it is. beautiful business model. <laughs> <Yeah>. it's, <laughs> stay high, it's, drink another one. I mean, it's, it's really wild seeing where the cannabis has come and how far it's came, and uh, especially. You know, looking at craft spirits, you know, juxtaposition or the contrast between the two like industries, wine has always been king around here. And now it's more, it's much easier to obtain a DSP, which is kind mm. of, which is very cool to your distilled spirits permit. Because that was the biggest loophole and hoops I was jumping through. And uh, so, but now cannabis. So there's actually lots of talk where cannabis is going to be a big com- like competitor with the craft spirits industry because of... There's just once we make the love together, <laughs> we, gotta, we gotta we gotta figure out the exactly the feds versus the state because obviously alcohol is heavily federally regulated, whereas mm-hmm. cannabis is state to state. Mm-hmm. But man, if we can make a weed whiskey, fuck yeah, I, or I just, a liqueur, I don't think it's gonna happen. I know, like I know, even, I, even look at alcohol, like you can't you can't make wine you, or you couldn't make you know certain things here. Oh yeah. We can no, we can more well, stuff here. We can't make wine bottle wine. We can make wine distill and distill it. it. We can't make right. Si- so it's you can't make everything that's not distilled, distilled here. And, then, yeah. and you can't make beer at a winery, right. you know, and vice versa. So mm-hmm. it's like I really, I so, highly doubt that they're going to allow cannabis. That's entities. like saying putting nicotine in your whiskey. Right. I, mean, I just don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. No, it's 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 so unfortunate. They, you you got to have the two. Like you smoke a joint and mm. have a shot of whiskey. Yeah. Or it's like an additive that you put in the whiskey, which is not hard. I mean, (laughs) shake it up and you're good to go. (laughs) Right? I mean, maybe I guess there might be some loopholes in terms of like maybe a bitters or something like that. Something super small. It's a food product. Or it's like, I mean, they do cannabis wines, but the alcohol has been removed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting to me. So, but I think it's, it's only a... It's I think I'd say give it a few years before like they actually have like a cannabis beer and then like okay. Well fine. I know that there is like cannabis like spirits, but it's non psychoactive. And right. so it's just like it's the flavor of hemp, uh, yeah. it's flavor of the hemp mm-hmm. and everything yeah. like that that they introduce with it. I'm like <laughs> that's kinda <laughs> Yeah. That's exactly what I was going with. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know. It's uh, it's exciting times. It's like non alcoholic. So much like, so much so much change yeah, well, in all industries. Mm-hmm. There's right. a Lagunitas Hi Fi. Yeah. Which mm-hmm. is like a like if LaCroix made an IPA, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. that'll get you high. Mm-hmm. And I, I helped with that project. I helped oh, kick that you project you off. Helped, you helped yeah. the IFI house. I built yeah. the original. The, it started in cans, and then they moved to bottles. Okay. But I, I helped build the canning line, and then okay. helped a little bit on the bottling line, but that was mostly the can craft team. Wow. Okay. Yeah. But that's it. That's really that was cool. a fun project. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> Shit. And they're doing really well. Okay. And it's good stuff. It is. I imagine. Yeah. Okay. Slap Lagunita on underwear, you could fucking sell that shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Not no, to mention weed. <laughs> it was crazy. I saw I was bra at, the other day. Just, <laughs> Lagunita's, Lagunita's bra? Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of that, man, we were trying to figure out. I'll pop that top off. <laughs> we're, right. we're getting more swag for our tasting room, and you know, we just had the kid, and we have <clears throat> uh, my brother in law's uh, wife, which was pregnant, came over to the house, and me and him were getting shit face wasted, and I kept saying and i don't remember any of this but i was like just pump and dump pump and dump it's a thing i guess for families like yeah. you know if you drink alcohol pump you know, 
pump and dump the breast milk because the kid will get wasted. You know what I mean? Yeah. And we're like, fuck, let's put that on the back of a, a kid's t-shirt. <laughs> Just pump and dump. Just pump and dump. <laughs> <laughs> It's, uh, I'd buy that shirt. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It could go in many different ways. Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> Not only for a kid, but, yeah. God, that's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, we don't uh, get a lot of work done here. We yeah, just like, usually bullshit yeah, around. I mean, just, like, is, it, is there a standard amount that you're supposed to pump and dump before you can actually There's feed the kid There's little things again? that you could put. Yeah, well, well, no, for the kid, right? yeah. It's depending on is it like one for ounce me, it's like, and then you, you, that's enough dumping. Right? And if they're not going to kids? sleep, you give them the heavier stuff that has more, <laughs> and they just pass the fuck out. Okay. <laughs> or it's, it's like, like when they're teeth, you just put whiskey on their mouth? Yeah. Yeah, Just give them this. This is fine. My mom did that maybe a little bit. More than just like a rub. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up, go to sleep. But, uh, but no, syringe in the mouth. Exactly. <laughs> but I never thought about breast milk. Yeah, containing some alcohol. Right. Like, wow. Wow. Okay. The more you, you know. just like breast, you like breast yeah. way more now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was always, I've always been Put a that, knocker man. Yeah. Yeah. Excuse I'm me, man. Irish coffee. Even a pump and dump. Yeah. I know. Can I watch? <laughs> can I know. So I'm interested. You could sell this. <laughs> Quite the technique. Okay. You can sell it. I could sell it. <laughs> Why dump it? Put it in a bottle. <laughs> wow. Pump, pump and dump juice. <laughs> That'd be an interesting uh, product to bring to market. It's like clarified milk with. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm not. I'm getting too. <laughs> so okay, so uh, let's talk about so whiskey, huh? <laughs> so you do with bitters here? <coughs> yeah, we do a handful of stuff here. Um, Not too many people know what candy caps are or what candy cap bitters is. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I want to bring the magic. Yeah, right. Um, I just like to say that like anybody says candy cap or I smell candy cap immediately Jason. Yeah. That's what my mind goes immediately to Jason. Yeah, I can smell yeah. his beard. Okay. <laughs> it always smells like maple syrup. Oh, yeah. Every time I go home, like, I just like walk in and Alicia's usually like, you smell like candy caps. I'm like, I don't, I, don't, I just, it's, it sticks on you. Jason, how can you be in? Okay. So I rub Jason's beard. what they are. So, yeah, I guess that's a bad <laughs> Hey, but I mean, so <laughs> is that what I'm smelling? Like that sweet aroma? That's, yeah, yeah. It's in the... It's in that magical elixir right there. So what, what are candy caps? So candy cap, uh, it's a locally foraged mushroom that we collect, but it grows um, basically on the west coast. Yeah, I think there's some in the jar. From uh, Sonoma County, or actually southern southern Bay, Bay Area all the way up to, uh, you know, Canada, basically. Yeah. So should we have... Um, should be in a jar, like, right around here. They can totally uh, hear us. Uh, and people the like, go out and, like, pick these <laughs> Sorry mushrooms for us if we can't actually get out there and do it ourselves. Because, you know, it takes a lot to make a little, like, 10 pounds of wet mushrooms collectively dried as one pound of finished mushrooms. Got it. But these mushrooms in particular, when they dry, they smell heavily, heavily oh, like okay. maple syrup. Okay. So it really imparts that kind of oh, like damn. sweet like component. You get in there, it's earthy, it's funny, right. it's not what you would expect, but um, shit, I can smell it now, it's crazy. Yeah, right, yeah. Um, but it most definitely it introduces like this kind of umami effect to whatever <laughs> you put it into. <laughs> Uh, which we just <laughs> actually released a candle fashion that we do with our rye whiskey, our candy cap bitters. Okay. Uh, a little sugar in the raw lemon zest. So it's, so we're, we're trying to make breakfast drinking more, um, socially acceptable. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. Without this, you know, you can't do that. Like you can't smoke cigarettes in your office anymore. Like exactly. Why can't you have that, you know, morning cocktail or afternoon exactly. two martini lunch thing? I mean, like, I've fuck? already been pouring like late harvest on my wine, but I'm looking for a, a wine alternative. You know? <laughs> yeah, right. Like, this is forty percent alcohol. You know? Pump and dump. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, I think that applies to him. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, so this is a whole other subject now. Okay. This is your candled fashion, yeah. also known in the industry as an RTD or RTE, ready to enjoy or ready to drink. So what, I guess, uh, brought this on? Um, actually, it was inspired by Sonoma's Cider when they were just, they, they canned just about everything under the sun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and they were doing all this, you know, wines and uh, effervescent bubbly goodness and just pretty much everything. And right. I thought it was super cool. And I was like, well, fuck, like, we, we do a handful of events a year and we take, you know, the rye whiskey and our bitters and we make this concoction so that we can show people what you can do with two of our ingredients. And mm -hmm. we burn the orange and give them this like, you know, kind of show 
on you know what we do and how we do it and blah blah blah. You know, we actually get more people that wanted to drink that than our actual whiskey. So we're okay. like, well, shit, all right? Um, let's put it in a fucking can. Yeah. Something readily available. Uh, you know, f- the biggest thing too, or one of the biggest things is. We like going camping. We like going backpacking. We float the river. I like sneaking alcohol into movie theaters. Um, yeah. Why the fuck not? This okay. is like the easiest solution no, okay. to it. <laughs> no, I, uh, I I agree. There's just lots of... It's funny because there's lots of arguments. I And I get into my an argument with my business partner, Kobe, about it all the time, about RTDs and how I think they're the future. Um, but his argument is it's like it's taking the craft out of it mm-hmm. because part of it is you buy a nice bottle of whiskey and then you handcraft your own cocktail at home or you know you go to a nice craft bar where they make those right and now it's kind of like here drink it you know um, but not everybody has the patience or the exactly. knowledge to actually follow that through mm-hmm. and people want a good cocktail at home and don't always oh, want to like you know sit there and actually make it after mm-hmm. work they want to just Pop the top open and enjoy it. Exactly. When it's not like they're taking it away. Right. This right. is still here. Yeah. It's still craft. Yeah. Right. No. Exactly. No. <laughs> well, and the bottles are still here. The business right. are still here. Yeah. You want to make it yourself? You can do that. Just give, no. them, give, them, give them more options. No. You definitely. Invite friends over, and you're like, you go out and you get takeout from some fancy joint. You bring it home, put it on a plate, and you're like, I hang. I did this. Yeah, right. It took me all day to make it. <laughs> well, I mean, do the same so, thing with this. Go in the kitchen, pop a fucking top, and right. come so back out and burn an orange yeah. for him. And you're like, oh. How many times have you <laughs> have you gone to a party or a family event and stuff like that? Like, right, you know how to make cocktails. Can you like make these cocktails for us? Right. And you're like, well, I just kind of want to enjoy myself here. Yeah. You know, instead you can bring this with you. Because I don't know how many times I've like, just to get away from that, I've pre-batched a couple cocktails and just be like, here you go. Right. Enjoy. I'm going to enjoy myself too. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I, no, absolutely. Yeah. I get that more as a photographer. Like, oh, hey, yeah, take pictures of this reception. And I'm like, no, I'm going to get shitty. At <laughs> I yeah, don't want to carry on my $10,000 camera. Thank you. Um, but so, okay. <laughs> but no, yeah, I, no, I get it. Um, and I mean, you also have valid points of, you know, where you could take them. You know, they're, it's more travel. And I think, and I think it is, you know, crafting a can. But it's just hard when you see brands like White Claw. Have you heard yeah. of this shit? White Claws? I'm, I'm guilty. I actually, I actually really enjoy White Claw. <laughs> White Claw. <laughs> right. I'm, like, I'm like, it's, it's so like easy a and refreshing. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I, I think what? Pops Blue Ribbon just uh, just re- released a new RTD of some kind. They also are doing a whiskey. No shit. Yeah. <laughs> really? No way. Very interesting. PBR, about that. Whiskey. Yeah, PBR whiskey. Well, also their yield um, is like this much in comparison to their. Is it going to be like pretty, like light on flavor? Yeah, I'm pr- it's like pretty much like beer. a vodka, as I would imagine. Yeah. Like, uh, they're just distilling their beer. It's a, the, just the barrel influencing the flavor onto the. Well, <laughs> the for instance, uh, Cutwater Spirits down in San Diego. Cutwater, okay. You know, they make a ton of canned cocktails, margaritas, palomas, mm. uh, you know, they have Bloody Mary too. Bloody Marys. Mm-hmm. Uh, they just got it bought out by Anheuser Busch. Mm-hmm. And not for the distillate part, but for the can, like, yeah. canned cocktails. And so who knows where they're going to take that? Yeah. So it's definitely an emerging market, and uh, you can definitely see a trend heading right. that way. Got it. Um, okay, which brings me to my next question: Are you gonna? Are you just building this business to scale and sell? Um, I mean, if someone came with a handful of zeros and a certain awesome number right in front of that, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Anyone, anyone would fucking sell. Right. Like right now, no, I, I really appreciate what I do, and I like I enjoy it. Um, you know, I'm a big advocate of, you know, you do what you love, you never work a day in your life kind of shit. Mm-hmm. So I feel like that, like I get to make my own schedule. Um, I most definitely wish I didn't work as much, but right. <laughs> so the schedule, making my own schedule is kind of bullshit. So if you're a small business owner, don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, it doesn't make a difference if you're talented yeah. like you are. <laughs> No matter what job you have, you're probably going to work all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> guaranteed. Right. Yeah. You were working what, like? I work at aware. 90, 90 hours a week at Sonoma Cider. Now you're at, it's like, no what, like 10 or something like that a week? <laughs> <laughs> it's no different. I mean, that's, <laughs> like, I haven't had a week under 70 for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what the saying, it, you know, an entrepreneur works 80 hours a week to avoid working 40, something yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah, so, that's, that's spot on. Yeah. <laughs> that is 100% so, spot on. Um, but no, I mean, going back to like we were, ta- we were chatting about Lagunitas, like, okay, I don't know the gentleman's name who started Lagunitas, but Tony? Yeah, is it, I guess it's Tony. Tony Stark. Tony, I think, Tony yeah. Stark. 
That's how we started. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Iron Man. <laughs> That's how we started. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> no, I don't know his name actually. <laughs> no, but yeah, like he sold Lagunitas to, to Heineken, mm-hmm. and then uh, he started 101 North. If I if I recall correctly, because that's all. Oh he really? Wanted. That's all he that? wanted to do. Yeah. He just, really? He just wanted to. I didn't know beer. that. I didn't know well, that either. I didn't know that's anything impressive. to do with it. Yeah. Huh. Um, well, because he sold it. half so half the company first, yeah. mm-hmm. yeah. and then he sold <laughs> yeah. the rest of it like what a few years later or yeah. something like that. And he just he went on. Uh, I don't know. So it's over a million dollars. Damn, I don't want to like. Everyone's like, oh my god, one one north. No, I'm not. I'm not sure. But I know. Don't quote me on that. Don't quote me. Shit. I should do my research. But no, I know he. He moved on to start another small brewery because that's what he did and that's what he loved, you know. Yeah. And uh, that's that's all he wanted to do. And he's oh man, that would be fantastic if I could sell this for a billion dollars. Yeah, I'd buy a little freaking island in mm-hmm. Dubai and, just, and, <laughs> and make on. my own little distillery yeah, exactly. for my personal consumption. Yeah. I'm gonna need a mojito today. <laughs> <laughs> better start to still it. Yeah. <laughs> um, more of that fermented molasses over there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but no, it's funny because you're talking about Lagunitas on everywhere. I went to uh, I went to Amsterdam, and of course, you know the Dutch Heineken. Yeah. But every restaurant you went into was Lagunitas cups and coasters, and mm. I'm like. Fuck, I wanted to get away from this shit, dude. What the hell? Um, that's good. Um, okay, so so you don't want to scale, and you don't want to hurt. You want to scale. I most definitely want to scale. And you are like, scaling. Yeah. So yeah, let's talk about that. You're expanding We're, next door. Yeah, finally. Like, we started with this place. We had one small 130-gallon still. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we had a couple of funky small fermentation tanks. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and then uh, we acquired another small still. And a couple more funky fermentation tanks. And then uh, November of last year, we picked up a couple of these uh, large Hoga stills from new to us, but they're not new. It was a distillery down in Roner Park, Mm -hmm. uh, California, uh, Sonoma County Distilling Company at the time. Yeah. So we bought these from them, heavily discounted, which is, I'm I'm all about that. Yeah. Got to save, save a buck to make a buck. No, that's awesome. Um, yeah, and then we're slowly, we just acquired a um, unit, two units down from ours. It's same size as this unit, but we're going to do bottling and storage and barrel storage. And, you know, so it, it's very interesting to think about how all of this actually came about because we were 2012. I sat up there on the sill of the distillery here, mm-hmm. and what was going to be drinking a whiskey that I made. <clears throat> out of a or out of a flask that I made at home uh, with a couple of family members, just kind of like, you know, sh- sitting and bullshitting and like, wow, this would be really cool. And like, now it's really cool to actually go up there and sit and see see, <laughs> and see, see this thing that's occurred. And you know, it's it, you know, it's not it's not blowing up, but it's it's evolving. It's it's we're doing the organic growth thing. Mm-hmm. You know, we're 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 slowly, you know, able to. Uh, consume something besides you know ramen noodles and mm-hmm. and you know I, I do enjoy pbr beer but you know occasionally i enjoy a lagunitas and a steak <laughs> <laughs> nice, um, nice. Yeah, absolutely uh, so i guess i mean how long have you been around for like uh, i was born years? in 80 uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah when were you born 1980 82 82 okay yeah, you're my sister's age. Um, but no, uh, how long has Ali Six been around for? Uh, so we came up with the concept and the whole um, drunken idea in 2012 and started getting the licensing going, which was, they made it easier for craft distilleries to pop up because they could, you know, you could get these craft licenses. Or at, before that, you could, get, you could get a distillery license. Mm-hmm. Um, and they made it easier, but California doesn't make it easy. Yeah. Whatever you do in fucking California, there's nothing easy about it. Right. <clears throat> um, so 2012, started doing all the paperwork, which is very fun and a large headache. 2013, we found this facility, uh, which would have been a great gin distillery, but it's really killer. Uh, whiskey is done. Right. <laughs> yeah. Motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I was, I was going to do gin. I was going to do, my main thing was I was going to do absinthe. Oh, it was absent. Yeah, oh shit, absent. Sorry. Yeah, no man, sweat. and that would be fucking killer yeah. to actually yeah. have like a. Well, the thing, I mean, there's what? Who fucking buys bottles of absent? You You're know, right. it's like you buy a bottle last year. <laughs> right? I mean, I love this. I love absent. Yeah, I, I love absent. But like I say, I like to start a lot of great nights on absent. I like right. to end a lot of bad nights on absent. Yeah. <laughs> just a, yeah. That's just my personal preference. Yeah, I mean, uh, but it, it's funny because when we were looking at this. Uh, <laughs> no way. Yeah. This is. Uh, well, this this was a. Uh, 
a product that we made for an individual back in the day. Um, Legit wormwood in there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude, it's phenomenal, too. Okay. May I? Oh, yeah, please. Okay. Yeah, take it home with Shine you. Some, some of your shiner. Um, uh, taxes have been paid. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, because we were, we were looking at, I mean, I was looking at the business model of, like, you know, starting a distillery and, you know, you could sell a bottle of wine for 80 bucks, you know, and people are going to drink that over a meal. You sell a bottle of whiskey for 80 bucks, it'll last for a week. So it's like, you know, um, but being in places like, you know, Hillsburg, Sonoma County, you get so many tourists that are willing to take away, take back more than just wine. So I think it's perfect location. But uh, that's always been like the battle, I think, in terms of people that understand like, oh, craft spirits are so expensive, but, you know, the overheads, you know, just as much. And oh, man. Like, yeah. The Aging the product and sitting in a barrel. Yeah. You're basically just babysitting something for a year, two years, or you know whatever until it's actually ready. So it's like, and there's evaporation loss. There's all this. Yeah, like how many or in how many bottles of wine does it take to make one bottle of brandy the same size? Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Like exactly. five gallons of wine will make you five or what is it? It's like a ten to one ratio, right? Yeah, yeah. Essentially, basically. depending so on the alcohol so yeah, content. If you look at so. it like that, then like it should be ten times the price of wine. No, okay. totally. You would think. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's so <laughs> funny. Like, even that. this guy, exactly. like, we sell this for 50 bucks. People see it in the can, they're like, what? And you're like, this is over a bottle of whiskey. The equivalent alcohol e content in here is 40%. This is 43%. 200 milliliters each can. That's, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, do the math, and it's kind of. So you have to justify it. The way we sell it is like you have to kind of explain it what it is. Oh, absolutely. Because the no, beauty is that they do drink this quicker <laughs> yeah, versus very, this. Very you true, pop right? this, you drink, you drink it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You pop this, you, you put a cork back it. in it. Yeah. No, no, definitely. Suckers. <laughs> <laughs> Come to LA 6. I'm, I'm <laughs> coming out. We have canned cocktails. They're delicious. <laughs> They are, um, they are delicious. <laughs> no, no, they are, they are great. Yeah, I, I shared one. Um, I'm sorry about the flies. Mates. I have no fucking clue what's going on here. Oh, dude, don't sweat it. I, I'm like, yeah, yeah this place is a shithole. <laughs> tell the fruit. It's Never all, coming it's, back. It's all, it's all the peaches. Right. Yeah, no, okay. So, yeah, okay, first off, where do you get the apples from? Because that's something that's local, right? Oh, well, so he's got it all on that. I mean, a lot of it, you know, this is still aging from... When Sonoma Cider was around. Okay. So, mm -hmm. like, a lot of it, when Sonoma Cider shut down, mm -hmm. we had a ton of, like, pretty incredible ciders that were aging. We had, uh, a you know, a bunch of brandy that was still aging here. Mm -hmm. Like, we had a, a ton of stuff. And so, we just were like, well, why, why should we let this die? Right. Let's keep it going. And so, we distilled it. And, you know, there's still stuff aging that's not even uh, ready yet. Mm -hmm. We have that, some beautiful. That's just incredible. French oak barrels sitting right yeah. there. You know, we talked about what's next, but it's like, it's not even time yet. Right. Like we still have a really good amount of apple brandy here. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, um, you know, I'm sure, we'll, and most of it was locally sourced. It was a lot of like lot really of interesting, apples, like yeah. Gravenstein. And like, mm -hmm. we had some stuff that we called West Cider at Cinema Cider that got mm -hmm. turned into brandy and like just a bunch of different stuff. Okay. And, um, you know, I'm sure when we start getting through some of this, we'll, we'll get some more local apples uh -huh. and make some more apple brandy. That's in. No, awesome. No, that's, Cause that's the thing. I mean, also just using local sourced ingredients, you know, like I know peaches are local as well, right? From your peach liqueur. Yeah. We get, uh, the peaches from uh dry Creek peach farm. Yeah. Out in, those uh, are like sought after. Those are like, like three bucks a peach or five something. Five bucks a Five bucks a pound. Oh, well, a pound. I guess. Okay. Yeah. But well, yeah. some of them are massive. They're yeah. Probably yeah. close to a pound. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they're most definitely they're So we get their funky peaches, which mm -hmm. is fantastic. Yeah. So like, they're ugly. They're oh, don't even have to add yeast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really. I mean, so sometimes there's a couple buckets yeah. out front that are well, fermented. No, I mean, well, that's that's the funny thing about like fruit and stuff. Because I had another business model of starting a food truck, but instead of food, just fresh pressed juice. Mm -hmm. And you can get what they call fallen fruit, you know, for dirt cheap, right. you know, and just because it's just not, it's not pretty, it doesn't look, you know, cosmetically perfect, mm -hmm. you know, for the farmers market to charge twenty bucks an apple or peach. <laughs> But uh, so yeah, but at the same time, that's uh, still great fruit, you know. Right. So that's especially for the sugar content. That's what mm -hmm. we're looking for because mm -hmm. that's your alcohol. So we don't, you know, once it's fallen, like that's just, it's getting ripe and it sits on the ground. It's getting more riper because those sugars are starting to like break mm -hmm. down. And so when we get it, they're you know they're they're not pretty, but they're sugar bombs. And oh, we're yeah. like hell yeah, crush them up, throw them in the tank. Yeah, yeah. delicious, it's magic. Yeah, and this is a spice peach. 
version. So we have the peach it's version coming out, hopefully. Brandy version. Or else okay. The peach brandy version. So is uh, I, got, I, got I got you. I got you, man. Is it, is, it actually, <laughs> is it actually a peach brandy or is it like a like a fortified? Like is it uh, like brandy based and then add peach like juice to it? Or no, no, this is 100% peaches, man. Oh, okay. We add some sugar to Fermented. kick up the alcohol content. Okay. But yeah, literally um, the first batch that uh, we did with the spiced peach, there was two tons of peaches that we hand pitted pureed. That was uh, here at the the yeah. shop. Added some, you know, some sugar to kick up the alcohol content mm-hmm. to have like a nice healthy fermentation, but also to get a little bit of a higher yield. And then after we collected everything that we did during the distillation process, we added, you know, an array of warming spices, mm-hmm. a shit ton of citrus, which we did like grapefruit, sit or uh, orange, lemon, um, and lime on this one, which was really interesting because it all just kind of like, right? It's like Sprite. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I drink. That's so why fresh. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> Sprite. <laughs> Just drinking some more Sprite here. Um, well, you're active, man. That's that's awesome. It's like uh, peppermint. There's like a little bit of like bubblegum notes there too. Yeah. And that, well, this one's, uh, do you put some water in there? Yeah. Okay. I, I was like, yeah, you can yeah. see that. A little loose. That cloud in us. Yeah. But uh, so yeah. it's, that's boozy. So you're not gonna. That's something you're not gonna pursue for. Um, time. not not for a little while. We're trying to get our bearings straight with everything else that we're doing and mm-hmm. expanding, and um, it's very expensive. Yeah, it's no expensive that's, shit. Yeah, yeah <laughs> labels, yeah, bottles, so. like uh, oh, those bullshit yeah. tariffs that are going on. Like we're there's a 25 percent increase in our our bottle cost, mm-hmm. uh, or just for the glass alone. And it's yeah. just stupid. I think it's so fucking stupid. But, <laughs> um, I just paid that bill this morning. <laughs> um, uh, was I going to see? So another fun story. This is something I found out is what you do with your spent grain. So after you're done with the fermentation, yeah. um, what do you do with the spent grain? You feed it to your daughter, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can I show you a picture? <laughs> 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 we uh, we give it to a local pig farmer. Eventually, that picture will come out. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's like his wedding video when we drink. I mean, have what? you seen it? You want to see it? <laughs> yeah. Have you guys seen my wedding video? Do you want to see it? I know, right? It's what every time we got wasted when we first started hanging out. We're like we come over to the house. Literally, it was like a schedule. We drink more. Watch some Dave Chappelle. Yeah. <laughs> and then watch my wedding video and pass the fuck out on the couch. For some reason, I don't know, like his wife, had to, his wife had to hide the wedding video. I think she destroyed it. I have never found it. <laughs> it was, no longer exists, but it was a great time. Was it, was it, a, it, was it good? Like, the wedding video? Yeah, oh, yeah. man, it was fantastic. Oh. Well, the story I never behind made it. it like, oh, okay. oh. <laughs> was it just the, like, what is it called when you consummate? Yeah. <laughs> is it just a consummation? Is this just like a sex tape? Uh, yeah, all 30 seconds of it. <laughs> Jason passing out. <laughs> yeah. Baby, you want to watch Dave Chappelle? <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Uh, sorry, sorry, Crystal. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the spin. Yeah. 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 Okay. Very yeah. sorry, Crystal. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I invited her on. Yeah. I was like, hey, you want to join us? Yeah. Oh, she was like, I'll be there, but no. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> Uh, which is probably better because she could tell some stories about me that I probably don't want anybody else to know. <laughs> <Yeah. hold them laughs> well, the, I mean, this is a family-run business, so that's yeah. what's awesome about it too, you know. And that's it's a lot of uh, the very common story in craft spirits. Also, it's you know. Oh man, it's yeah. If, if she was not okay with this, I'd still be slinging drinks and trying to figure out a way to make a buck, kind of yeah, thing. But right. she, yeah, my thirtieth birthday, we came up with this drunken idea of making a distillery. And she was like, that's actually a good idea. And so 30th birthday, we planned a trip. We're, very, we're about the same age. She's a couple months younger than I am. Mm-hmm. We had the, our 30th birthday within the same year. So we're like, let's go to Scotland for our 30th birthday. So we went to Scotland. And uh, actually for my, my 30th birthday, she gave me this three-ring binder. And I flipped it open. And it was like uh, barrel producers, grain suppliers, still manufacturers, like all this stuff that it was like, it was like the basically like how to just you know open a distillery right. that she created herself and i was like holy shit like she's in let's do this <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then awesome. we went to scotland and fucking like that was that was it we're like all right this is this is how it's happening this is yeah. what's gonna happen um yeah my wife was not about that 
she's like, oh, you're going to go play outside by the still? Okay, bye. Like, <laughs> I'm out there. Just, the run's not finished. It's like three in the morning. Like, just, I got to push out the last few liters. You know? um, yeah, no, that's awesome. That's good. Yeah, yeah killer support system. That's, yeah, if, if she wasn't there for this, this probably most definitely would be. Mm-hmm. Not to mention the the countless nights of me coming home like, I haven't drank that much. <laughs> <laughs> what for dinner? Just babysitting this girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sleeping out of the shop again. Right. So um, back to the grain. Yeah, back uh, to the grain. <laughs> can you cut my mic? I'm going to go use the restaurant. Okay, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, I'll cut your Don't mic. Cut mic. Don't off. cut the mic. Don't cut the mic. I love a parade. <laughs> um, but yeah, yes, because that was one thing when I first, I mean, I learned more about it. Like, um, so what do you do this, with this bent grain? Uh, so a local uh, pig farmer, Kenny Lowell, mm-hmm. awesome dude. And he's been around Hillsburg for a while now. He has a um, small pig farm right up the road off Alex or going towards Alexander Valley, <clears throat> and he does uh, heritage breed pigs. So he has uh, yeah heritage Mulefoot pigs. and uh, Berkshire and like some really cool breeds, mm-hmm. delicious stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, for the vegetarians and vegans, I'm, I apologize. Yeah. Um, and the cutest donkey you'll ever see, too. Yeah, yeah. It's just like hanging out there. I forget his name, but I call him Donkey. Yeah. He, just, he comes up, I give him a, a peach every time, yeah. a funky peach, or I'll, right I'll try to save a decent one for him, and he nice. just comes up, and it's like the coolest thing. But yeah, That's we give cool. him uh, we give him the uh, <laughs> uh, all the, the spent grain, which, I mean, I swear these pigs are fat, and they breed because of it. Right. It's actually very interesting, too, because we do, um, the, during the, the peach time like i'll take buckets of this the funky peaches then uh-huh. it's just basically pits and you know some of the fruit that you know was not up to our standards mm-hmm. but it'll sit and start fermenting on its own and i'll go dump it out there and these fucking pigs right away they just go to town and it. it's like dessert and they eat it mm-hmm. and then they they literally like pigs don't get drunk they just go pass out <laughs> yeah uh-huh. like i think kenny's best saying is like Pig only has one bad day in its life. <laughs> this is true story. It, it goes to the fucking right. kind of thing. It goes to the uh, <laughs> uh, But it's, I mean, it's just super, super cool to be able to like kind of, you know, right. pull this kind of, it's expensive as fuck to like get rid of stuff. Yeah. Especially something like that. It's like an organic product that can actually go and feed things or turn into a compost. Like what I don't, I'd hate to throw it in a landfill. Right. So it's the beauty of Kenny that he will happily take it. And these pigs well, will, like, eat it. They will, you know. It goes full circle, right? I mean, right. so you source your grain locally? Uh, no. No, unfortunately. No. California is a little bit more expensive than... Yeah, uh, yeah, no. Not a that's, lot of grains you're on around here. Right. Yeah, it's yeah. mostly <laughs> grapes, right? Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot more money in grapes than there is grains. Yeah, no, definitely. But, I mean, but that's the thing. It goes full circle. So, I mean, grain, whiskey, and then to get right. rid of it, you know, give it to some... Uh, Give it to some. some we got We got this guy in here. This guy doesn't know that he's on video. Yeah, you're on video. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all saw that. I've seen that. You're supposed to be at work right now. <laughs> you, you are at work. <laughs> pull, pull up the barrel. Right? Oh, I mean, you can do. Uh, so, so I don't have a mic for you, sir. What's, what's, your, name? What, what's your name? Adam. Adam. It's Adam. <laughs> what's happening, Adam? I'm doing well. So you're, so you're just swinging by? Just swinging by. That's what I do. I like to come in, poke in, <laughs> okay. work hours. All right. Five. Good. How are you guys doing? <laughs> fucking great. Chilling. We're uh, fighting this fucking fly epidemic. Oh, dude, it's hot as shit outside, though. Yeah, yeah, they're they're part of the like, podcast. Yeah. They're now, they're now, uh, just should like we Adam. Name, should we name just them? Just like Adam, they just breeze in and hang out. You know, yeah. you know, you know what I'm going to get? I'm going to get one of those, like, little right? salt rifle no, exactly. things. Have you seen those? I have. Those are pretty those cool. Those are salt guns? Yeah, the salt guns. Yeah, just like... Yeah. I would have a heyday. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, bring it in. Yeah. Bring it in, yeah. That's not that fun. Yeah. Um, You're here. You already ruined the show. <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> <cool>. <laughs> All right, let's start over. Uh, All right. So okay. green. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I actually gave uh, Kenny a bunch of all my spent apples, too. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. He would, like, come give us a couple packs of bacon and pick up oh, picking man. bins full of apples. Yeah. It was pretty awesome. He was kind of, uh, he's still working on that, the, the trade aspect of it, but 
He's uh, he's pretty decent at hooking up with some pork loin and some bacon oh, okay. and stuff yeah. like that. But I never yeah. got any pork loins, very, but I got a few packs of bacon. Our very first, the launch party. Remember the launch party? Yeah. Of course you remember the launch party. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I remember the beginning of it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was great. Yeah, I saw it in that time. Did like, you really? Good. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was... Uh, about his sister. We had a 140-pound uh, pound pig on mm -hmm. the spit. Took 18 hours to cook that fucking thing. Mm -hmm. You've done that a couple times, haven't you? <laughs> Not a pig, excuse me. No, uh, so no we've, I, I just mean, remembered it so well that it feels like it was like multiple times in my head. <laughs> right? I think my brother-in-law was uh, he, slightly creepy, but he most definitely, um, I think he ate the brain of the pig. The cabeza, right? Yeah. Hey. yeah. yeah. He's, on, he, on, he's also on. an eater of weird things, so. You yeah. stayed up all night. <laughs> Good, how are you doing? No, I absolutely. I, I got drunk and hung over like three times that day. You're on video, too. Oh. Hi. It's cool. <laughs> Get in here. Come on. It's More 360, bulls. so there's really no avoiding it, you know? Uh, yeah. Right here. Right. <laughs> Still in it. Still right in there. it. You get it all. <laughs> and your name? Alexa. Alexa. Yeah. Alexa, hi. Hi. <laughs> so, awesome. Uh, so, okay, another thing that's, like, kind of fun, all right? So, you're part of what you guys call it? Grove Street Distillers. You and Young All and two of us, yeah. Yeah, right? <laughs> so, no, I mean, but... Here's one thing that's kind of cool about what I've seen about the distillery community, the craft spirits, is everyone's kind of there and they really support each other. There's oh, no real competition, you know? Yeah, like it most definitely isn't. Like at this at this moment, it's not. Mm -hmm. um, I always like kind of think of it. There, there's literally 400 wineries in Sonoma County. That's yeah. competition. Right. In Sonoma County, there's about 12 legal distillers, probably mm -hmm. a thousand distillers, but mm -hmm. 12. Legal right, exactly. distiller, so there's no real competition. So it's it's nice to actually have that camaraderie between you know mm -hmm. other local distillers that are like, oh, what are you doing? What do you want to do? You know, let's direct people to you and come to us. We can do yeah. like a, a distiller tour of Sonoma mm -hmm. County kind of thing, which is kind of cool because um, obviously you know Sonoma County is very much known for wine. Yeah, wine <laughs> is king, definitely, yeah. and that's a. Uh, that's why it's a breath of fresh air to yeah. have a distillery now too in Hillsborough. Well, it's kind of nice. like the the barrel bus we did. Yeah, didn't, oh, you, put that, oh, didn't yeah. you do that? The barrel bus? Yeah, oh, yeah. For or, uh, during the barrel, barrel tasting LKC. weekend, like right before it, Alexa put together like a whole event wow. where it was all of the non wine, wine companies in Hillsborough, awesome. and we rented a bus, and it went from Alley Six to Bear Republic to Sonoma Cider. Awesome. And it was all of yeah. our like, different barrel That was actually, products. that was a fun part. That was a fun event. Yeah. It's a little dangerous when you start barrel tasting whiskey. Yeah. But that's why we had a bus. Yeah. 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 That's why we had a bus. Nobody had to go anywhere like, <laughs> yeah. in a you car. We really get on the bus. Yeah. We yeah. started at Alley 6. <laughs> <laughs> we did start at Alley 6. It was fun. <laughs> on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> we wanted to get fucked up real early. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, <laughs> No, there needs to be more of that, I think, is just for Sonoma County. I mean, they have beer tours and stuff like that. They need to have a spirit tour. I mean, well, uh, yeah, that's cool too. Most definitely. Sorry. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, whatever. Yeah, that's cool. Whatever, Fuck bro. your <laughs> idea. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Let me tell you about something. Yeah. Tell you about something else. Yeah. 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 That that was yeah. amazing. That was phenomenal yeah. for you yeah. know Sonoma County Distiller. No, uh, yeah, the Wine Country Distillery Festival. For the listeners that don't know, if you live in Sonoma County, we do uh, the second annual Wine Country Distillery Festival is coming up in <laughs> February. Uh, no, the brains behind the operation is Lindsay Musco uh, from Poppy and Vine. She works. She's worked in hospitality, much like a lot of people. You know, like you guys were behind the bar. I was behind the bar. Most people kind of gravitate towards that, but. She's more about supporting like local hotels and creating stuff like so people can go off the beaten path and experiment, you know, experience like a small winery. Oh shit! Um, the battery died. Yeah, no, it overheated. Oh. It does that. So is it really, is it because yeah. you're so hot? So I just gotta get. I gotta give it a moment. <laughs> um, but yeah, so she was the one who put that on, and that's what's so. Like she came to me. She's like, I want to do the Silver Festival. I'm like, mm. I want to help. I don't care. I don't need anything from it. Like, let's just let's just go. Like, let's make this happen. And uh, yeah, she just fucking boots to the ground, man. And me, I was like, dude, you know, hit up my network, and uh, it worked out great. And yeah, we're we're looking at a different venue for the next year, so that's gonna be a good time. That so. was, I mean, that I, I that was probably well, being that it was so close and being able to see all like the, you know, local distillers smiling faces and stuff. That was the coolest thing. Like, mm -hmm. so you, 
<clears throat> mentioning doing like the distillery like you know row or you get mm -hmm. a stamp or whatever mm -hmm. as you go and check all these distilleries that was the coolest thing for me is because it was like everyone together mm -hmm. you know hanging out and you know bullshitting and you know yeah. what are you doing weird now and, like, yeah for the most part no n no one's like aggro or getting weird like I made the single malt whiskey. But like, no, you didn't fucking make. Yeah. Did you create that? Like, yeah. shut the fuck up. Like, yeah. we're all. <laughs> yeah, nobody's. Yeah, it nobody's very pompous hard to about be original it. in this fucking. Yeah, industry, you bought man. the malt, right? <laughs> yeah, you didn't do it. No, it, did you grow it? Yeah, and roast it yourself. Yeah. What yeah. are you trying to Hand say? Hand blew here? the bottles and fucking corked it. Shut the fuck up. Right. <laughs> no, it's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That'd be really fucking cool, though. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, no. I'd like to meet that if guy. Can, if somebody can Back grow their own grain, bottles, malt like, it, and then like toast it, and then ferment well, it, and then do that, and then yeah. I mean, that would be hand produced. Yeah. I mean, there's so many art forms yeah. that go into already this bottle of whiskey. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anywhere from the malter to uh, the the cooper, the glass maker, everything just like mm -hmm. it, it's it's all just a combination of all these art forms that kind of go into that. Yeah, no, absolutely, I agree. It's uh, and, and yeah, it would be cool to see that guy blowing his own bottles. So uh, Jason, <laughs> why don't you get on that shit? Dude? Come on, you just expanded. There's some room over here. Two bottles here, twelve thousand dollars. Remember that one conversation we had about getting like oak stumps and hollowing them out and making barrels like one <laughs> yeah, piece barrels do, yeah, do. like we just get these big logs and uh, hollow them out and right. then make a plug yeah, and just, just plug the top right? <laughs> and but, just use that as a barrel but I mean, at the same time, that is the that's coolest. Brilliant. This is still brilliant. No, that, it's a, it's a, yeah, it goes, it goes into the story of how the rye whiskey was right? created, too. Yeah. And you don't have to make them all the same. Just yeah. whatever stump you find, just hollow it out yeah. and make a plug for it. I mean, I, <laughs> that's, that's to me, like, that's one of the coolest things about craft spirits is... The geekiness? Yeah, the geekiness, but also the, the ability to, you know, roll the dice, you know, on some stuff. Um Take a chance. Make an oh, apple brandy because you have some extra stuff lying around. Um, you know, these big companies can't do that, and they stick to the same stuff, and they just market it and push the same stuff over and over again. But, I mean, that's that's what I love about it. It's like the way, the way I see some of these, some of the products, well, craft spirits in general is they're like baseball cards to me. Like, I still have the bottle of Alley 6 that you sent home with my wife, and I'm not going to open that shit because it's batch number one. Like, that's it. Like, that's fucking the, <laughs> that's the Mickey Mantle rookie card, dude. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what's cool about it. I want that and, uh, <laughs> you know, right? I know. Can I have you guys sign it? I'll give you 30 bucks right so now. I <laughs> actually, so, have you, uh, have you been to a fern bar in Sebastopol? No, I have not yet. Oh, um, so, yeah. so, I went there for, uh, it was like, I think the first, like, two weeks of the open, I went in there. And uh, Sam's a good friend of mine. And he went in there and I looked up on the shelf. It's like, that's an old label of LA6. I'm like, if you guys want that changed out for like the new label, we can, like, I'll bring mm -hmm. over some bottles and change it out. He's like, no, no, no. He's like, let me bring those down and show you what they are. It's batch one and two mm -hmm. on the shelf up there. I was like, holy shit. Yeah. Okay. I'm like, I actually haven't tasted that in years. Mm -hmm. He's like, oh, let me just pour you some. And I was like, that's delicious. Right. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. It's probably like, about. you're the only person I'd share this with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, it's uh, it was really interesting to taste Unless like Jason comes by, you know. and then he might be able to get a little too. Yeah. <laughs> like 12, 13 batches later, mm -hmm. years <clears throat> later, yeah. and then all of a sudden you get to taste it, and you're like, oh, wow. Yeah. Like, that's... That's standing up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nailed it the first time. Yeah. <laughs> but then you probably go through your garage, and you're like, oh, this is cool. Very first, you know, spirit. And it's like, you're gonna go blind. You know? and you're like, I actually, I actually just did that. I cleaned, yeah. out my, I cleaned out my garage, and I was going Funny through my, some, 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 yeah. Yeah, some old distillates of mine. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, I haven't tasted this in a while. And I'm like, oh god, that's heady. I'm like, yeah, I right. dumped it. I'm like, I just, I don't want to keep this anymore. Yeah, like, <laughs> I'm gonna keep that to start my grill with. Yeah. You know? exactly. So proud of it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, no, that's that's awesome. Let's see if that's cooled off yet. Now yeah, back up. Cool. See, Are you guys getting any pushback for the festival, the spirit festival that you guys put on through the city? Okay, so Adam just <laughs> chimed in. Are we getting pushback from the city? Um, because it's spirits, and the, you know, with that, people don't always know how to control themselves as much, or at least the city doesn't think so. Um. So okay, uh, we didn't really have any issues last year at the the spirit festival, so that was kind of good. Yeah, you know, sure. seeing that you know 
we tra- we treated it responsibly, um, and so did the guests, um, and that was really cool. But um, it, they just uh, really, it's all comes down to you know liquor license. I mean, because I've been to you know uh, like Southern Wine and Spirits, right? Mm-hmm. I've been to their portfolio <laughs> showcase, you know, and it's like. <laughs> Where you get to try anything under the sun, like anything in their portfolio, you just taste you it. Yeah. Yeah. And you know needless to <laughs> say, <laughs> right? oh, we had like three tickets that yeah. you, know, and you were only allowed to pour that much. You know, yeah. Like the winter spirits in Santa Rosa. And mm-hmm. was, like there was just so much pushback from the events. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. I mean, well, we, we had tickets and things like that, but we're also pretty much just turned our heads like, oh, whatever, yeah. you know. <clears throat> That's the way it's kind of... Yeah. Unless, of I course, like someone that works at the City of Santa Rosa is watching. I know. City of Santa Rosa, follow the rules. Don't you worry. We got it. Unlock. Um, this is all be ready. Quarter ounce per person per day. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. I feel like that's one thing that's right now also like helping different, you know, distilleries come together. Mm-hmm. They're also trying to fight the fight for themselves, yeah. you know, against... Yeah, exactly. And, uh, I mean, what, yeah, exactly. Like what, like, what's the rule? What can you, what can you sell out of your tasting room right now? Uh, it's bullshit. That's what it is. Um, so it's an ounce and a half per person per day. Uh huh. You can sell three bottles per person per day. Um, which for beer and wine, cider, that's everything ridiculous. else, ridiculous. There's no limit. No yeah. limit. And that's that, well, no, you, sell, you sell a fucking that. Okay. So that's with the wine. Like thing. I get that. But here's Costco. You can roll up and you could buy a bottle of or a, a barrel of Jack Daniels for a thousand dollars. Like, yeah. like, exactly. yeah, it's, yeah, uh, yeah, it's, it is. I, I mean, I just it's like, gonna change. It'll eventually change. Yeah, like, I mean, even it, it, this it, has changed since you started this. Oh man, big anyway. time. Yeah, you weren't even allowed to sell your own stuff <clears throat> out of your own tasting room. Mm-hmm. That's, you know, you had to go through someone, which dropped your profits and your margins, and it just made things really tough. Not only that, but you had to actually make everything in bulk enough to distribute through a, a third party. Yeah. and get that out there because it you like you know we can bring you in here all day and charge you I don't know ten dollars for a tasting mm-hmm. and if you like anything be like oh you have to go up the street over here to tip top and like you know buy right. it off half the shelf of, over there well, yeah we would sell it for half of what you know for half profits but the whole concept of like real craft where it's like like a brewery can make a keg of something uh-huh. and sell it in their tap room on draft mm-hmm. you know or they could even a, get a label approval and sell the bottles at their tap room. Mm-hmm. It just wasn't allowed in spirits. Yeah. yeah. Now it is, which is great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. 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 Hey, cheers. Thanks, man. Um, um, it allows us to kind of come up with smaller like product things like the peach liqueur, like the apple brandy, yeah. things that we don't old distribute, fashion. the old fashioned, things mm-hmm. that are just available here in the tasting room. <laughs> and we can use the tasting <laughs> you can use the tasting room kind of as a test market, you yeah. know, and kind of <clears> see <throat> what does well and what you know, like our single malt, like we've done what, like seven different seven varietals? Seven different styles, yeah, of single malt. Of single malt, and then... Uh, this one is the most magical. Yeah, and so, you know... <laughs> They're all kinda, pretty amazing. They are really good. We're bringing back a couple of them, too. Oh. So we started, like, oh, single we're, malt we're kind of following suit to the wineries and stuff. No, it's not. Okay. Um, his max lens is gone. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh... Which one are you bringing back? The Bonlander? No, the Black. Oh yeah. Ooh, I yeah. like the black. The, the black, black is yeah. good, but it, it costs a lot to make, right? It does, yeah. We so actually kind of cut it a little bit. We did yeah. a two row plus black patent malt. Okay, because I had I had a bottle of I had a bottle of each, and I'm really pissed because I don't. Yeah. I, they've it's done, actually consumed. surprisingly I, very similar to the you know even the black patent that we did 100 percent of it. So we did like 500 pounds, got 10 gallons of finished pro- product out of it. Mm-hmm. Which if you were to make a beer, you'd probably have like. Are you talking about the first round of Black Patent? The Black Patent, oh, yeah. yeah. He said he had a bottle. But it, no. I, saw, I saw like probably half a bottle at least. Yeah, yeah. see, there's the fucking rookie man. Yeah. Uh, Mickey man. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry, dude. So, Hold so on to that shit. Rookie so, man. So during, rookie <laughs> man. During Got him done. Cut me up. Yeah. During the um, fires. We're talking about basketball, like, right? Almost two years ago, like a year and a half ago. Um, I was like, all right, I'm getting out of Dodge for a little bit. And I'm like, there's a couple things I'm bringing. Batch one and the black. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, no. Uh, so single malts, all right. Mm-hmm. So that's a whole other topic in itself. In the future of single malts, um, where do you where do you see single malts going? Um, in the belly. Ameri- <laughs> yeah, exactly. In the belly, um, most definitely, kind of going towards the American style of single malts, uh-huh. like being able to like introduce all these different styles of either malted grains that have been smoked by. Uh, there's a uh, distillery in Tucson, mm-hmm. and they smoke their 
malt with mesquite, which in Arizona, mesquite wood is everywhere. Mm -hmm. Hardwood, smokes, the, you know, it's, everyone thinks of barbecue, but why not whiskey? It really introduces like this kind of unique kind of like smoky characteristic mm -hmm. to the actual whiskey. Yeah. Um, so I think that's something that's going to, you, you, you'll probably start seeing for the single malts is people in their specific regions using things that are readily available to like change the characteristic of yeah. these like malted grains to make an American style single malt instead of like peat bog, which is like that's Scotland. Scotland's yeah. known to that fucking exactly. medicinal band-aid iodine yeah. those beautiful tasting notes uh -huh. um for <laughs> <laughs> right band-aid iodine <laughs> band between my seeds i love it yeah. oh, yeah. um i love I got fucked up. <laughs> but uh no i mean i i just uh I'm, I'm blown away i'm super excited i think there's i think we're gonna give scotland a run for their money america and their single malt game I uh, well there's so much than... more i mean there's there's regional things exactly like, you Regions. know scotland is like highland single malt mm -hmm. you know Isla, you know, Southland, whatever, mm -hmm. wherever the fuck it is. Like, there's different, it's the same for us, but we have the ability of, like, we have these crazy different climates in mm -hmm. America that we have, like, desert, we have, you know, Florida, fuck, they yeah. can use, like, dolphins to smoke their fucking <laughs> yeah, right. no, I'm about it. A little yeah. alligator we action. Edit this, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. but, but no, absolutely. And that's the thing. I, again, going back to craft and the sky's the limit with creativity. You're not, right. you know, the TTB is going to have to start rewriting some stuff here soon in Big terms time. of like, oh, this is what makes this particular whiskey. It's like, mm -hmm. ah, but what about this, you, bud? This is not a dolphin whiskey. Yeah. It's like yeah. gins yeah. nowadays are not your grandma's gin anymore. Mm -hmm. It's not just straight pine yeah. needle. It's more floral. It's, yeah. There's so much varietal with just gins. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is this is America. Like, we don't really <laughs> follow the rules. Like, our yeah. whole thing is based on, like, fuck your rules. Yeah. yeah. And so I feel like it's kind of like the opposite of German purity, purity laws with mm -hmm. beer, where it's like, we're just like, we're going to, do whatever the fuck we want mm -hmm. and we're going to try everything yeah. because mm -hmm. maybe it can be better. Like why stick with this one thing that is like the past when mm -hmm. we can make better things or we right. can make new things that are just interesting. Yeah. Like, like I mean, for instance, you're, you talk about your love of brandy. Like most brandies just been like, okay, that's what you know is Corbell or E and J, you know, then you get that rare bottle. That's like, Oh wow, this has been, you know, aged you know with angels toes i don't know but <laughs> you, well, uh, you told him, yeah. <laughs> you told him <laughs> but uh, uh I, just, I just had to say his name is uh, angelo, I, 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 <laughs> angelo. <laughs> the angels the angels were okay with it they weren't harmed they they regenerate right? their toes it's right. exactly exactly Tony Tony and it's been proofed <laughs> with you know their whole toes uh, child labor no but uh, I, I think as like i said it's really exciting if anybody wants to try this i just kind of brought this out out of like personal stash it's a little single barrel of rye okay so mm. single barrel rye okay it's a uh, very boozy <laughs> yeah it's okay. cast strength it's delicious so that's probably one of the things that we're looking so, to kind of do in the future is okay so kind of like future. using you know things that we already have to well actually this is you know this is just kind of cool and geeky too it really is it and we only share it with people that amazing before you actually start to dilute it with distilled water uh-huh to get it down to the proof that we put it in a bottle, like it's it's pretty fucking magical. So this is, this is the last you think you can sell it in like uh, three seventy five or something, or do you no, still sell it in seven fifty? Yeah, seven fifty. Yeah, I I, I hate set three seven fives because I can drink one of those in a sitting, and if I look at that and go, I, uh, in the morning I'm like I fucking beer. yeah I'm like you son of a bitch like <laughs> you have an alcoholic or you have a problem <laughs> you know so. <laughs> you're, like, you're like that's like the size of a twelve ounce beer. <laughs> I can drink that. <laughs> Well, I could fit that in my hand. Hence RTD. Yeah. It's dangerous. So you don't want to do 375s, but you're okay with just opening a can and <laughs> killing one of these? It justifies. You kind of see the difference. And like, on, honestly, this was our favorite bottle that we were tasting on this batch. Which one um, is this? Uh, this is... <laughs> it's it's six. You going back? Yeah. Work? What's the what's you the proof on that? Back to work? Like one o two. One o two. Okay. About there. What is it? Like one o two. One o two. Okay. I believe on this one. Yeah. Nice. Did you? So you barreled it at one o two. No, we went uh, higher. I mean, it and comes you in lose you evaporation. Lose a, yeah. You lose a little bit, but no, we lose a lot in those little fucking barrels. Oh, you did the no. tens or? Uh, the, this was a fifteen. This was fifteen. This was a 15. 
Oh well, no, I mean that's do that's killer though. <laughs> I mean that's killer. That's uh, one hundred two. <laughs> I mean it comes in. Of course, I you could taste the heat, you know. Oh yeah. But at the same time, it's it's got a nice dry bite to yeah. it. Oh, yeah. Your voice really just good. got deeper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm ready for my you know my late night <laughs> radio show. Uh, this is DJ Easy Dick. Oh, 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 oh. Um, oh, we're supposed w- to change w- topics. Right? <laughs> yeah. So now we're going. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Caller, no. <laughs> exactly. Now we're doing callers. Um, well, awesome. Uh, <clears throat> oh, it is good. I, I, I mean, like it. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's caramel. It's sweet. So it's I guess happy. this is what the future holds. Yeah, it was a more single barrel, and you're going to bring back some more single malts. Mm-hmm. I think classifications are absolutely out the window. Mm-hmm. You came out with a 40 proof liqueur. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, that's awesome. <laughs> that's that's great. Yeah, it's regret in a glass. Right? I like it. So, so right. no, it's not uh, Robert, you're moving in. I mean, cannabis is taking off for you, huh? God, you're in it. It's crazy. That's awesome. Okay, so symmetric hitting the shelves again soon. Working on it. Okay, I don't have a date yet, but we're working on it. Other and then that cookies is going to be cookies killing it. beverages coming out. Okay, you know, awesome. More brandy in store. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Wicked. Infused. All right. Brandy. All right. Um, yeah. You need some of that black market shit. Yeah. <laughs> right. Infused brandy. I mean, I call Neil. at the bottom of your screen. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, so, so what's funny is, um, actually, this. Just a little, little, little side note. Um, I was talking to Marco up at Charbet. Mm-hmm. Like, this is probably about two years ago. Marco, yeah. And I was Good talking uh, about, you know, infusing the spirit with cannabis. And he's like, oh, he's like, I have the perfect recipe for that. And in our drunken stupor, he like, divulge his his whole process of his personal consumption thing and i can't recall exactly yeah. what it is but okay. he like went down to a detail because that man is did he drug you he, it, drug it, you? he drugged me yes, so you yes. Never no. For you. no just i just drank a lot of his spirits <laughs> right. um it, it was just it, he he like <laughs> basically went into a science on everything and it was so interesting and i wish i could like had a re- like recorder during our drunken stupor that we can like you know record and all that but it was uh it was definitely a process yeah if you want to put weed in something i could i could probably tell you the process <laughs> yeah okay you take you that yeah take some weed and put it i can help you put some weed in something yeah. <laughs> you just put some weed in it yeah. put yeah. some weed in it it's like it's like, like, <laughs> it's like, it's like, like baggy, okay. just put some tussin on it put some yeah. tussin on it <laughs> broken bone just get the tussin all up in there <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, cool, man. Let's uh, let's wrap this up. Any more shout outs? Alley mm-hmm. 6, what are your guys' hours in tasting room operations? Uh, we just actually changed our hours. We're open five days a week. Okay. Because it's expensive to do what we do. So we need <laughs> right. your money. So please. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Support our uh, habits. <laughs> uh, Thursday through Monday, 11 to 5, we're open in the public. Right um, closed all magical holidays. Um, Weekends. The weekends were open. Yeah. I mean, if yeah. you're in town and all of a sudden you see a close sign, give us a call. Maybe we'll be in town. We're around here. Yeah, yeah. I, I can come out. I can come down and like open up the shop. <laughs> you, know, you know, we 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 hate to turn away somebody just because you know we're not mm-hmm. directly uh, here. We're out running errands or something like that. Yeah. So. Especially someone that's like an interested enough in spirits. To watch the Spirits podcast. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> if you can't do this whole podcast, this whole drunken stupor, then we'll open the door. For you. Exactly. <laughs> if not, do what I do. I just hit the doorbell. Yeah. <laughs> Someone's going to do it. And of course, <laughs> Jesus. I want to thank Jesus. Hey, um, okay. Mama Jorg. Okay. Baby Mama Jorg. Yeah. <laughs> A baby's baby, 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 baby. <laughs> 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 right, 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 cheers, <laughs> cheers. <laughs> cheers, guys. All right, that's awesome. Adam, nice meeting you. Cheers, guys. It's gonna be uh, fun. All right.